I'm going to talk to you about obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Actually, we'll just talk about the mechanics of obstructive sleep apnea. You guys can look up the syndrome or read about it online. <clears throat> the, if, you're, if you understand the anatomy, you'll understand why this happens to some people. Actually, it's a big portion of the population now. And has obesity, the obesity epidemic increases, you'll see more and more people having sleep apnea. The symptoms of sleep apnea are snoring aloud, restless leg, fatigue after you wake up, not getting a good night's sleep. Uh, actually, in between the snoring, you'll actually stop breathing. You'll hear a partner or a friend stop breathing. Loud, noisy breath, and then suddenly nothing. That's the apneic part. Uh, I'll just go ahead and describe what happens here. So the, the anatomy of the throat the back of the throat, it acts as a way for oxygen and food to get down into the body. Oxygen to get to the lungs, food to get to the stomach and the uh, uh, colon. So here's a picture of the nose, mouth, the chin. Here is the tongue that sits at the base of the mouth. And then the back of the throat, the nasopharyngeal area. And it's nasopharyngeal because it also joins with the cavity of the nose. This little thing here that hangs over is the uvula. If you were to look at a little kid's, like what we do with our flashlights as physicians and we check for tonsillitis, we'll take a tongue depressor, a popsicle stick, push down the tongue, and then look with a light at the uvula, or sorry, the uvula, the tonsils, and sometimes the epiglottis. That's the little thing right here that stops food from going down the windpipe. And usually we can push this down and see clearly back there, tonsils or whatever to make a diagnosis or to see if there's anything wrong. <clears throat> An average person should have a lot of space back here. Uh, whether you are standing up or whether you are lying down, you should still maintain that space. If we didn't maintain the space and it choked off, then as a species, our bodies wouldn't have allowed for the species to continue. So it works, and it usually works nicely. The problem, as we're seeing now with a lot of obese folks, and people who are drinking alcohol, people who are excessively fatigued, people who have a lot of postnasal drip and allergies. We're seeing this area back here get really swollen. This is the same picture, but it shows the uvula a little more swollen, extending and almost touching the nasopharyngeal area, and then the tongue kind of swollen. Uh, that's the best illustration I can make. Uh, it's kind of swollen and also either blocking off the trachea or at least touching the nasopharyngeal backside. So you'll see there's not enough space here compared to the other space. And that's when <clears throat> if you were to lie down this would definitely come into contact. And you'd be able to either shake it off or hock or in what you'll hear as I described sometimes if there's air that can get intermittently through but it can't get out you'll hear a um, sleep apnea person move shudder or um, choke and that sometimes will get the uvula and the soft blockage out of the way so you can breathe again but it happens multiple times in a minute multiple minutes in a night and that's not the way you're supposed to sleep the body will continuously during the time that you're sleeping think that you're being choked off and usually that sets off a fight or flight response believe it or not you can have fight or flight response in your sleep not healthy it leads to other things down the line it leads to poor sleep and that leads to medical conditions, diabetes, depression, worsening depression, ADHD worsening, uh, problems with hypertension, cholesterol, believe it or not. And so all that can be added to or worsened with sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea. So here's what usually happens is when it does swell up, there are ways to uh, help. The conservative way is you take a CPAP, a continuous positive airway pressure. It's a machine that you wear at night. Big used to be big, now they're smaller contraptions, but it just allows airflow in through the nose to kind of force the back open. If the airflow forces this soft tissue out of the way, kind of like using um, a leaf blower and moving um, pieces of grass out of the way, same thing with that. It keeps things open so you can breathe through that. Uh, it's irritating, it causes nasal dryness, sometimes nosebleed, and it's huge. The machines used to be big and noisy, now they're kind of slim and quiet. But um, 
again, it, it, it takes to get a little bit of getting used to, uh, but since they're becoming more compact, it's becoming tolerable. Uh, you always have to have a test before somebody diagnoses that, and that's usually a, a sleep study, a polysomnogram. Now, before that was done in the hospital, you had to get set up. They check your brain waves, they check your oxygen, they check your chest movement, they check your movement, they watch you on video, and they see how the uh, whole night goes. And there's a criteria for diagnosing it, uh, and when it's diagnosed, then your options are either the CPAP machine or surgery. Sometimes there are easy things to do before that. If it's a nasal swelling because of allergies or because of what I think also happens is alcohol. I think a lot of my guys will have alcohol and if you've ever heard this before some people will complain that after they have beer they have a stuffy nose and they snore a lot. Usually it's because of swelling back here and the components in beer can cause problems with an allergic response. Alcohol can do it too, but uh, just to be fair to the uh, to people who drink alcohol, if you decrease the swelling by either spraying the nose, taking an antihistamine, rinsing out the nose with neti pot, and I'll, I'll put a link to my stuffy nose or eustachian tube dysfunction video, if you take care of the irritation back here, that might help a little bit. Uh, if you stay away from alcohol, that might help a little bit. Um, if it doesn't, or certain foods too, if it doesn't, then that's the time, and the, you're not a candidate for CPAP, uh, then it's the time that we go for surgery. Surgery is pretty aggressive. Now they're coming up with um, more gentle surgeries, I guess you can call it, but before they would just cut everything out and open the passage up. Um, it, called, it used to be called a UPPP, and uh, only certain surgeons were doing it. Now I think a lot of other doctors are well versed with the procedure. And again, there are smaller procedures to do now. Sometimes even just taking the tonsils and the adenoids out will be good enough. But um, those are the things that have to be considered uh, as the end result. The biggest thing that you can do is lose weight. As I mentioned, if you have an allergy problem, get rid of the allergies or treat the nose, clean out the nose, clean the environment. If you can't stay away from your allergens in alcohol and food, do so for at least two months and see how that season goes. If you can lose weight, as I mentioned, if you gain weight to the chin, to the outside, you'll probably have weight narrowing down the space. If you can lose at least 10 pounds, or 10 percent, I'm sorry, 10 percent of your body weight, it might, in some cases, help you uh, with stopping the OSA. But again, that has to be sustaining, has to be done properly. Uh, I wouldn't just cut weight quick and then uh, hope to stop the disease. I would do things effectively. So it also lowers your blood pressure and lowers your cholesterol. So those are some of the biggest things that we can do to, number one, understand and find the problem and admit to it, or at least get worked up for it. Number two, maybe preventing some of the patients that are getting unnecessary surgeries by doing a couple of things with weight loss, uh, restrictive dieting, and or uh, environmental changes. If this helps, or if you know anybody, you might want to schedule for a visit with a primary care doctor or a pulmonologist a sleep specialist. Those guys will be able to help and make the determination about which way to go from where you're uh, presenting with.